Hello, I'm Tyler Klegel, and I'm going to lead you into the mindset of two of the most famous postmodern artists when they created some of their most famous paintings. The first person I'm going to talk about is Damien Hirst. Hirst was born on June 7, 1965 in Bristol, England. His mother convincing him to paint and the religious upspringing, which had great impact on his art, has made him to be the man to lead the British artists in the 1980s to 90s, and is the reason he is the richest artist alive today. The first art piece of his that I'll be discussing is The Physical Impossibility of Death in the Mind of Someone Living. The sculpture was made in 1991 and is a tiger shark preserved in a tank filled with formaldehyde. Funded by Saatchi, the goal was he wanted a sculpture to describe to himself what death was. The shark was a perfect choice being that it still looked alive but wasn't. When it first came out, and even still today, the piece was met with heavy controversy, being that it, in simplicity, is just a stuffed tiger in a tank, but in, in her sculptures and paintings, it isn't what it is or how it was designed, because some of his art pieces he never made by his own hand, he got other works to do it, but it is the meaning behind the painting, and it is the reason he has gained international fame. The next one of his sculptures I am going to explain is For the Love of God which is a human skull from a 35-year-old man in the 1800s covered in platinum and 8,601 diamonds. The teeth are real and were all inserted in the skull. The entire thing weighs 1,106.18 carats. The reason he first created it was in an interview he said he had the ability to. And the reason he named it For the Love of God was because every time he unveiled a new sculpture or painting, his mother said, For the love of God, what are you going to create next? The sculpture grew a bigger meaning than just because he can. It showcased how we have limited time here on this planet and showing us what will remain of us after we go. Just a skull. The second painter I'll be talking about is Philip Guston. Like Hearst, he was an experimental artist, trying new styles no one did before. Both were huge, but Hearst hit a little more international fame, where Gustin did get international fame, just not as broad as Hearst. His family were immigrants to Montreal, where he was born in 1913 and died in 1980. His father committed suicide, which later gave influence to some of his art and is the reason his family moved to Los Angeles. He attended Manual Arts High School and became friends with soon-to-be well-known Jackson Pollock till he was expelled and started to self-teach himself and then soon went independently. The first painting I'm going to talk about of his is called Gladiators and was created in 1940. Heavily influenced by muralist Diego Rivera, this was created by funding of WPA, Works Progress Administration, and this is his most famous of the murals he created for them. He tried to capture the ideas of the Italian Renaissance in it. It is a social realist art piece and is popular to the left-leaning artists. The mural shows children fighting and is the first time he uses shields, swords, and more importantly, hooded figures, which is shown in his latest paintings, like the next painting of his, Edge of Town, which was created in 1969 and shows two KKK members driving a black truck while smoking cigars. The wood and the nails in the back of the car were to show that they were going to out to burn a cross on someone's yard it was ultimately created to depict KKK as cartoonish yet evil. Many of his paintings have Ku Klux Klan members in it, like city limits and impurities of pyramids, shoes, and paintings. The reason for this is in the earlier stages of his career, when he was making murals, one was destroyed by Ku Klux Klan members. He, he first wanted to depict them as evil for a kind of revenge, but soon grown into more than that, to the point that he was trying to show how he saw them. People who can only do evil deeds because they are wearing a mask. The clan is the reason his paintings became more realist and abstract, like the first paintings he made. Both Gustan and Hearst were obsessed with one thing shown in their art, Gustan being the Ku Klux Klan and Hearst being death. Like I said before, Hearst didn't always make his own art. He had hundreds of people on his team to help make them um, for him, and Gustan made all his himself. Thank you. I hope you have enjoyed this presentation on the art of, on two of the greatest artists in postmodern era.